Yeah. It's crazy when you're a truth teller and you start telling the truth and people react not with facts and figures that will contradict the truth, but with emotion. The last video that I released, uh, uncovering these social justice warrior whisper network. Oh, that was a chain reaction. The good part is there were a lot of conversations had after I posted that video. A lot of people started evaluating their place within this industry, within this comic book industry. There were a lot of conversations had. I took part in some of those. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you listening now that are creators, you had conversations. That was the point of the video. I wanted those conversations to be had. I wanted people to feel comfortable evaluating and reevaluating their place within this comic book industry. For the last two, three years, it's, be, it's been this comic gate versus social justice warrior and everyone else is caught up in the middle. Everyone else, but guess what? Certain people want you to choose a side. Me personally, I choose the side of, hey, I just want to read good comics. I want to create good comics. I support people who make good comics, period. Now, after I released that video, exposing the social justice network, the Social Justice Warrior Whisper Network. Oh, not only did I get support, I got the backlash. People were like, oh, well, yeah, you're a comic gay. We figured you were. You're our target. We're targeting you. What? 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 Wow. One of the interesting responses I got was from Brian Dunham. For those of you who aren't familiar with him, he's, a, he's an artist, a very talented artist in his own right. Used to work for Image, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward, he's the editor over there at Antarctic Press. I made a few comments in the last video about my experience working for an Antarctic Press. And when I express these things, I can only speak of my personal experience. My personal experience working for Antarctic Press. Other people may have had wonderful, fantastic, great experiences. But the energy I got working there my experience working there, the marginalized, the marginalized, what do you call it? Not marginalized, just the zero effort to sell my product. That's what I'm going to call it. Zero effort. Now before, and I'm going to take you back to 2018. Let's go back. Time travel as of now. We're in 2018. I was curious about working with Antarctic Press. I grew up a young kid in Texas seeing Fred Perry, Ben Dunn at all these conventions. And I thought it was cool that a comic book company was actually here in Texas. And they were in stores everywhere. I wanted to work for this company since I was 14 years old. 14. Met Ben Dunn, 
great experience. And I wanted to work for this company. Got my shot for my book, Tainted Love. Oh, Brian Dunham. Editor and chief, whatever you want to call him, over there at Antarctic Press. He felt a way. After seeing my video, he felt a way. He has a right. We all have a right to feel the way we feel. When you put something out there in the universe, you can't control how other people receive that information and what they do with that information. So, Brian sent me a message on Facebook. It starts with, Arthur, in your recent video, you say you did not know Tainted Love was in previews, but I told you when the catalog would be on sale. You sent us solic solicitation texts each month, and you sent us the covers when we asked for them, for the ads. I'm confused. We asked for the art for the solicitation and previews on November 2nd, 2018, for issue one. I even explained on December 17th, 2018, the way the diamond schedule works. That's what he said. My response, because in my video, I explained that I didn't even know that issue one was in previews until Bradley Golden, who's a writer who uh, is over at Second Sight, Studios. More on Bradley later. More on Bradley later. So I responded. There is no need to be confused. I sent you artwork and was told that it might be in previews in a couple of months. Might is a big word. I wasn't aware of it actually being in previews until I was told by Bradley. There was no communication throughout the whole process. It was a horrible experience, and I would have thought that AP and Audit Press, being in business for three decades, that there would have been more professionalism and a better system in place, i.e. telling me to turn in issue two by a certain date to avoid a diamond cutoff, and then the editor disappeared for three weeks. Keep in mind, when you say editor, you're basically talking about the person that formats the book to be printed. Antarctic Press wants you to turn in the books completed. Completed. So, if there's anything they don't like on these books... It's coming out of your pocket to get it fixed. So, Antarctic Press, when it comes to editing books, it's a bit, bit of a stretch, right? Let me continue. Then, at this blacklist thing that apparently I wasn't aware of, but I decided to see... If you would be a man, I decided to see if you would be man enough to tell me which is why I asked you about my comic, Black Villains Wanted Twice. I had no real intention of bringing it over to AP after the bad experience I had. I just want to give you a chance to be a man, to be honest. But your response was, I'll check it out on the stands. That's what he said. I'll check it out on the, when it hits the stands. I continued. Maybe you treat other creators differently. And that's awesome for them. But you made my experience dealing with AP pretty crappy. And I'm disappointed. Very disappointed. So you can keep your list of blacklisted creators and put me at the top. Yeah, 
Totally. Put me at the top of this so-called ban list. Put me at the very top. I continued. Because from here on out, I'm blacklisting Antarctic Press. I'm blacklisting Antarctic Press. He responded. You finished issue two? Why didn't you submit it? Then when it was all completed. Huh? Did he not listen to anything I just said? I continued. You said you weren't. You said you weren't interested. And then the whole blacklist thing. Remember you blacklisted me? Nobody has been black. Wait. Nobody has blacklisted you? Nobody's blacklisted me? Hmm. Okay, Brian. I was told by Ben Dunn that I was, along with several several other creators. Now, check out his response for a person that said I was never blacklisted. You told Bradley he was banned a year ago and he came to me panic while we were talking about his deadlines. We were in the middle of a conversation and you told him he was banned. I told Bradley Golden that he was banned. I'm sorry, I have no power at AP to ban people. Or maybe I do. Hmm. Nah, don't have that kind of power. Bradley Golden, along with Spike Jarrell, or however you say his name, they were both blacklisted, along with me, along with several other creators. Half the people you see over at Second Sight Studios are people that have been either banned from Antarctic Press or their projects rejected by Antarctic Press. So, basically call them the We're Not Good Enough for AP Club. I don't know. No shade. So, I responded. I never heard of this banning stuff until Spike told me that it was banned along with Bradley. And then Bradley started making posts about being banned. And then they both said that it was that I was on this ban list. So, I got tired of this back and forth. I got tired of this he said, she said thing. So I'm like, I need to talk to somebody in charge. I need to talk to somebody with some authority over there at AP. Because Spike and Bradley aren't the most reliable people when it comes to information. Sorry, it's just, it is what it is. Love you guys. But it is what it is. Let's see where I was at. Oh. I messaged Ben about it, and he stated that y'all banned me. And he tried to get you and I'm suing Joe too to unban me. His response. Right. Larry told Bradley not you as it was typed. The bottom line is. When I have two creators tell me. And it's verified by one of the people who started the company. That means it's true. So are you saying. Ben Dunn lied to me. I'm going to repeat that to you. Question I asked Brian Denham. So are you saying Ben Dunn lied to me? His response. 
You're welcome to submit a project when it's complete. You didn't answer my question. Are you saying Ben Dunn lied to me and that you never banned me from AP? If you submit a fully complete project, we can review it for publication. You said you were going to send me a project that was half complete. When did I say this? No. I responded. You still haven't answered my question. Tainted Love was over three months late and we had to resubmit it to Diamond for order adjustments. Over three months late, really? Let's talk about this. Actually, it wasn't. And you stated that you wouldn't resubmit orders. You're still avoiding the question. Again, are you saying Ben Dunn lied to me and that there was never a ban? It's a simple question. Brian's response, I'm on the phone with a creator about another matter. All of a sudden, he's on the phone with another creator. He initiated this dialogue. Remember that. So, my final response, after he said, I'm on the phone with a, with a creator about another matter. Yet you can type that instead of answering the question. I checked with Diamond, just in case you were telling the truth, and Tainted Love was never resubmitted. So, tell me, Brian, are you really, what? So, tell me, Brian, are you ready to tell me the truth? Are you saying that Ben Dunn, the founder of the company that pays your bills, lied to me about being blacklisted by you? So tell me, Brian, I'm sure you're watching this video. Are you ready to answer this question? Because this was on Wednesday of this week. If you, Brian Dunham, the editor-in-chief of Antarctic Press, did not ban me from Antarctic Press, are you saying that Ben Dunn, the co-founder of Antarctic Press, Creator of Ninja High School, Warrior Nun, all that, blah, 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 blah. Are you saying he lied? Are you saying that Ben Dunn lied to me? Silence. He still hasn't answered the question. I asked the man three times in that conversation if he's saying that Ben Dunn is telling me a lie. Or did Ben Dunn ban me from Antarctic Press and he didn't want to tell, the tell me? But I doubt that because Ben Dunn has been very supportive of what I do. He's even backed my recent Kickstarter. So I doubt that narrative is true at all. This is a Brian Dunham thing. And Brian, by the way, don't think I don't know about some of the work you're doing behind the scenes. Don't think I, I'm not aware of that. I know what your, I know what your pen is doing. So, in a nutshell, that was my conversation with Brian Dunham, president, I mean, editor-in-chief of Antarctic Press. And again, this is my experience with the company. It has not been a positive one from so-called editors assigned to my book disappearing to zero promotion of the book to, and I can understand if something doesn't sell in Diamond, those pre-orders are not there. However, when I look at the post on Twitter, on Facebook, and I see the Antarctic Press team going to different conventions, and I don't see one of my books on the table, 
That is telling. That tells me a lot. It tells me a lot. When I was asked to change the cover for issue two that featured a black woman, that told me a lot. Antarctic Press has been around for 35 years. And if anybody's familiar with Antarctic Press, they will hire black talent. Don't get me wrong. They will hire black talent. But when you start doing black people stuff, you're out of there. 35 years, thousands of comics published. How many of them have featured a black female on the cover? Oh, yeah, it's going to be way less than 100. You're gonna, not even going to have 100 black men on the cover. Not by themselves. Fred Perry has been over there. He was the token uh, black guy for years. Then they got other black talent. But he's worked for that company for 15, 16, 17 years. Why, is it, why isn't he a partial owner? These days it's about ownership. That's why people, they express you do not need a publisher. You don't need a publisher because in 2020, what are they going to do for you? In 2021, what is this publisher really doing for you? Oh, well, they'll get you in the stores. You can get yourself in stores. People are making more money on Kickstarter and Indiegogo than they would if their book was in the store. Remember, a lot of these publishers, they have benchmarks before you start getting any type of royalty deal. So in essence, if you don't sell two or 3,000 copies, those royalties are not kicking in. And if those royalties are there, let's be nice and say you get a dollar per issue. If you sell 10,000 copies, you still have to pay for your production. So you're still barely breaking even. If that, if that, it's crazy, right? You sell 10,000 copies, your royalties kick in at 3,000, you got $7,000 before tax. You still have to spend three, 4,000 on the production of that issue. You got to pay for it then you still have to turn around and do the same thing again and again. So all that money is basically being funneled back into the comic. It's a reason why over the last two years you see a, a lot of Antarctic Press books on Kickstarter, on Indiegogo, before they see print. Because they ain't selling like that. I was nice with the 10000 I was nice with the 10000 but a lot of these books are not selling $10,000. they are not. And if you're watching this video, you already know why they're not selling in large numbers. Now, granted, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do sell more, but mostly, eh, no. And 10000 It ain't really much. I sold 2700 and like 400 something. That wasn't nothing. Didn't see a dollar. But I did see a royal. I mean, not a royal. I did see an advance. I did that. But some of these contracts don't even come with an advance. So, it's crazy. But these are my experiences with Antarctic Press. Yours, again, may be different. Other creators' experiences may be different. It's a very frustrating situation to deal with. The communication wasn't there. The promo wasn't there. It was a clusterfuck. And don't forget, I was there when the whole Comic Gate thing went down with jawbreakers. I was there. I was there when, and David Furr, and Shannon Smith, if you don't know who David Furr is, he's a writer. Shannon Smith is a colorist. They know what I speak of. They were in the same meeting I was. 
the same meeting. And I dare them. I dare them to say I'm lying about this. I dare them. I put this on everything that's holy. After the jawbreaker fiasco. Because Antarctic Press had a golden opportunity. Before and after. They had a golden opportunity. They did not capitalize on that opportunity. They got more press than they've ever had in their lifetime. And they failed to capitalize on that. What they did want to do. The conversation, the meeting that David Furr and Shannon Smith were a part of. The meeting was to go behind Joe Dunn's back. Joe Dunn, he's the one that holds the wallet over there at uh, Antarctic Press. The conversation was to publish this book anyway. The conversation was to publish the book anyway. The conversation was to do anything to get Richard over to AP. If they had to fly him out, if they had to buy him steak, lobster, whatever the case. The conversation in a meeting that I was a part of was to get Richard at AP by any means necessary. This is the conversation that I was a part of, along with Shannon Smith, along with David Furr. This was the conversation. But a funny thing happened. Richard released a video talking about Jungle uh, Antarctic Press Jungle Book Anthology, and someone else was doing another Jungle Book. And Richard pretty much was like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is madness. This is madness. And we all chuckled. <laughs> we all laughed. Richard pretty much said, and I'm paraphrasing, y'all are losing. Y'all are losing. So I wasn't a part of any meetings after that, but that's the truth. That's the truth that Comic Gate doesn't know when it comes to AP. That AP, that certain people in AP, they still want to go behind Joe's back and reverse that decision and print this Jawbreaker's book. And if anybody in that meeting say that I am lying, oh, there's going to be hell to pay. David Furr, Shannon Smith, and you know who else was in that book? I mean, in that book. You know who else was in that meeting? You know who else was in that meeting? I want you, I dare you to say that this meeting did not happen. I dare you to say that this conversation didn't happen and that somebody in that meeting who's a vital part of AP did not want to go over Joe's head and get this book published. And give Richard whatever he wanted to make this happen. I dare you to lie and say that this conversation did not happen. I dare you. I dare you. So that's what you, the situation you have with AP. And if you're connecting the dots here in what I'm telling you you will realize that there is a strong disconnect with A. Peters, an internal pissing contest. That's what I called it in the last video. Between Brian Dunham and Ben Dunn. And if you don't believe me, look at the facts. Look at the line of public domain books like Exciting Comics, Jungle Comics, Planet Comics. Look how many editors... They've been through. Go to Antarctic Press Dallas or Antarctic Press Facebook page. Scroll down the history. These books have been through more editors, more changes in ownership and overseers in a very short amount of time. All this was birthed 
from being done. He wanted to create a superverse. He wanted to create a superverse that will have indie creators interact with AP characters and basically that got shot down. The end result was this focus on public domain characters. I sat in some of those meetings and I told them this was a bad idea. Why? Because they are not dynamite. There was no plan. Dynamite had a plan with these public domain characters. AP just wanted to, hey, whoever writes a story about these characters, we'll put them in an anthology. That was their plan. I sat there in these meetings and I told the powers that be, this was not a good idea. And if you look at the exciting comics, for example, you will see why this was not a good idea. Heck, first page of every issue. Whoops, we made mistakes. Whoops, we made mistakes. Whoops, we made mistakes. Then the quality. There was no quality control. No quality control. Again, these are my experience. These are things that I observed. And if you go to the Antarctic Press Facebook pages, you can see this for yourself. The change of guard. Every few, mo few months. Who's running these books? Who's overseeing these books? Is it Ben? Is it Brian? Is it Ben? Brian. Ben. Brian. Connect the dots. You want to know why certain books are failing? People are too busy. And fighting. To come together as a unified front. Maybe they'll come as a unified front and dismiss everything I'm saying. Wait a minute. They can't do that. Why can't they dismiss anything I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Proof is right there. The proof is right there. That's why I said go to their Facebook pages. You will see, go through the timeline. You will see the change of guard every few months of who's overseeing these books. And that's just one example. One example. Brian Dunham, again, I know what you're drawing. Don't make that be another video. I'm telling you. I titled this video The Fall of AP Antarctic Press, but it's really just exposing things that I've seen while I worked for you. And you're not even man enough to answer a simple question. Again, it's been done lying to me about this blacklist. That's what I want to know. I have no interest in working for AP ever again because of these experiences. Especially while Brian Dunham is over there. Especially why Brian Dunham is over there. And it's ironic that y'all did not want to publish Jawbreakers. And y'all are like the super Republican type mentality over there. Maybe this is the difference between creatives and businessmen. And maybe that's why the guard keeps changing over there at AP. Because creatives, like Ben Dunn, they have a lot of ideas. But they're not businessmen in the sense that they can take those ideas and really take them to market and make it happen. Brian, you suffer from this same problem. You're not a businessman. You're a creative. A creative who has been placed in a nice, comfortable position position at this company but you're fumbling it if it wasn't for being done no one would know that it's Antarctic Press 35th anniversary if he wasn't posted these uh, little tidbits on Facebook on Twitter no one would know as the editor in chief you should have had a plan to celebrate the 35th year anniversary but there was no plan you know, you're going to be like, well, we put it on the books, celebrating 35 years. That's it. 
That's it. The year is almost over. The year is almost over, Brian. You failed this company. That's the bottom line. Brian Dunham, you failed Antarctic Press. You failed the creators. You failed Ben Dunn. You failed Joe Dunn. You failed everyone. And I look at books like Rags and Punchline being casualties of this. Because you, again, failed this company. I would love to see books like Punchline and Rags, which are fantastic books, reach a wider audience. They should be selling more. They should be selling more. But under your leadership, under your guidance, they're not. There are sales, don't get me wrong. But they could be selling more. These are top 10 quality books. And the only top 10 quality books you currently have under your roster. Do more with these books. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And if you're only offering them a 15 to 20% royalty, there needs to be some nego renegotiation. Because I doubt Fred Perry is only getting 15 to 20% royalty. If the books are selling, there needs to be a renegotiation. There needs to be a renegotiation of those contracts. That's all I have to say. Oh, I got a lot more to say. But I'm going to say that for another video. And by then, who knows? Maybe Brian Dunham will answer my question. Maybe he will tell me if Ben, if ben Dunn is lying to me about this ban list. I doubt Ben Dunn is lying. I doubt it.